Hey everyone, thank you for joining. My name is Eric and this video is, I think it's the fourth part in my mobile app tutorial series. I've been traveling around for work a little bit, but I'm finally back home and I'm excited to keep putting out tutorials. So last time in this series, I think all we did was create the start settings and quit menu. It doesn't do anything right now, but in this video, we're gonna make the start button do something. We're gonna to transition to a difficulty screen with three difficulties we're going to add movement to this menu screen and the difficulty screen for the transitions between the two and then we're going to move the globals node out of this tree structure into its own auto loaded actually global position that way it's it'll be available across the entire project so we're going to go through all those things it should be pretty straightforward so the first thing I'm going to do is rename this vbox container that we created last time and I'm going to call it I, I guess we can call this start menu it doesn't really matter I'm renaming it because we're just gonna copy it so I'm gonna right click and then duplicate and we're gonna rename the duplication to difficulty difficulty menu so now we just have to go through these the the benefit of copying it is that we don't have to worry about adding the dynamic fonts to each of these buttons and changing everything we can just copy over all those settings along with the vbox container so these are actually overlaid right now, so they just say the same thing, so you can't see it. So if we go into the difficulty menu VBox, go to rectangle in the settings, and then move its X position to, I think, 1024. That is, oh, I did the height, so 576. So 576, now it's kind of over. That's where we're going to want the difficulty buttons to be. Whenever we hit start, we're just going to shift the start menu to the left. We're going to shift the difficulty menu to the left, and then the player will be able to see it. So we can go through and rename these. I think I had some interesting names for mine in the example finished product, but we could, we're just going to go with easy, medium, and hard. So we've renamed the nodes, but that's not going to change the text. You can click on the button itself, and then here under the inspector, it's still set to start so we can change that to easy and then medium and then hard now what these buttons are going to do eventually this will be a few videos from now they're just going to move up the buttons that we'll use to change the color for our projectile so those buttons will be sitting here kind of underneath this main app and if we hit easy we're going to show the first row if we hit medium, we're going to show the first two rows, and if we hit hard, we're going to show all three rows, giving the player nine options for color. So that'll make a little bit more sense if you saw the example finished product in the first video. I encourage you to go back and look at that if you haven't. So we've got the start menu. We've got the difficulty menu. The last thing we're going to do is add, or well, it's not the last thing we're going to do. The next thing we're going to do is add a script to both of these nodes. So start menu and then difficulty menu. Now it's important that you don't create the script beforehand because then when you duplicate it, it you'll just have to go in and delete the script and add a new one. It's not that annoying, but it, it is, I mean, it, it, why do that? So they're actually going to have the same move function. If you've seen the video that I put out on tween nodes, they're a very easy way to add some smooth movement to your games, especially when you're doing things like that or, or things like this. You're not transitioning to a new scene. You're just moving a couple nodes around to replace each other. So we're going to create, we'll, we'll create the function first and then add the tween node and then you'll see the movement for yourself. And if you want more details, you can check out that video. Node. Move. Tween. Oops. Well, I guess it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to do this before we, so we can just right click on start menu, hit add child node, and then type in tween. So it's not called a move tween, it's just tween. We're gonna add it, oops. I, I meant to add that to start menu, so I'm just gonna drag it up to that start menu VBox container, and now it's in here. We're gonna click on it, we're gonna rename it to move tween, just to stay consistent. So now we're grabbing that node. You can use this get node, or you can use the, the dollar sign with the name, it doesn't really matter, whatever you prefer. So we've got it, now we have to call this function interpolate property. So basically what a tween node does is it lets you modulate or progressively or linearly or 
uh, exponentially or however you want to define the transitions, it lets you change a property of a node. In this case, we're going to use it to change the position property, but I just want to let you know that you can use it for other things. So I'm going to call it on self. Actually, I'll point out to, again, there's more details about this in its own video, but as you're filling out this method call, it gives you all the parameters and you can see them and they kind of spell out exactly what we need to give it. For the first thing, we're going to say self because we are using this node on the node. We're using the tween node on the start menu node where the script exists. So self, the property is position, the initial value is position, the target is the final value. We'll say two to begin with for the duration, but we may change that. And then tween dot trans, I think it's quint, yeah, trans underscore quint, quint, and then tween dot ease out. Now I think I may have made a mistake, and I did. So the issue is that this position doesn't exist because I don't think this VBox container, I don't think it's giving us access to its position. So I think all I'm going to do is create a node 2D. This might have been a better way to do it anyway. I'm going to create a node 2D. I'm going to name that start. I'm going to drag it up so it's still under menu buttons. I'm going to put start menu in here. I'm going to copy this so we have it right now. And then I'm going to come back in here. I'm going to get rid of that script. I'm going to create a script here in start. So now we have the start.gd create and we'll put in that move. And now we have the position because we're able to get that from this node 2D. That's probably a better way to do it anyway. I'm sorry I wasted a little bit of time putting that script on there. It's important to know that there can be some differences between these nodes. So I'll just stick with the node 2D for now. And in a second we'll do the same thing with the difficulty menu. So we've got this move function started. The last thing we need to do is call move tween dot start. So now we have this function. We can call it from a lot of different places. We're actually going to call it from our buttons. So when these buttons are hit, we're going to add some signals to this script and then we'll call the move function with a target that we that we want it to move to. So we can go ahead and do that just for an example. We'll go to the start button since that's the one we're working with in this one. If you click on the node, wherever you have it in the editor, click on the node tab and then go down to this pressed signal. Click on that and then hit connect. We're going to connect it to our start node because that's where our script is. So I'm actually going to rename this. I don't really like the default naming, so we'll say start pressed. And then click on connect. And then it creates that function for you in that script. And then I think, actually, okay, I made another mistake. I keep making mistakes, but I'm trying to keep this relatively raw so that it's realistic to actual development. <laughs> So I'm going to delete this signal. I don't want to put it in start. I actually want to put it in menu buttons. We want to we want to kind of keep these all of these buttons initiated and called in the same place, which would be this parent node of menu buttons. In case we add more menu buttons in the future, it'll be easy to kind of build on what we already have. So all you have to do is come in here, click on the signal that we just created, hit disconnect. We can delete this function call in here. We're going to go up to menu buttons, click on that node and hit add script, menu buttons. And then in here is where the signal, where we want the signal to pop up. So go back to start, go back to node. Oh, I'm sorry. Go back to the start button, go back to node, pressed, connect, and then connect on menu buttons. So that's where we want it to be. And I guess I'll just leave the default naming for now. In here, when start is pressed, we want to call the move function for our start node. So we can say git node start dot move. And then we're going to give it a position of negative 576, zero. And I think that that will work. So let's try it. Let's just see what happens. Oh, I'm sorry. That's not going to work. I gave it two values. It actually needs to be in a vector 2 because the target that it's expecting is in a vector 2. So let's try that. We'll run this. I'm 
like 40% confident that this will work and it didn't. So interpolate property on, oh, okay. So the other mistake I made, I left this tween node under the VBox container when I move things around. So I just need to make sure that this is a child of the start node since that's where the script is now. So hopefully that's the last thing we have to fix. Start, perfect. So we hit start, we move the starting menu to the left and ideally the difficulty menu would come in at this point and, and replace it and then we would have a kind of a back button that we could call and transition back to the first menu. So we're essentially gonna do the exact same thing that we just did with the difficulty menu. So under menu buttons and child node, node 2D, we'll call this one difficulty, difficulty, we're gonna move this VBox container under difficulty, we're gonna delete the script or remove the script from this node for now, because I made a mistake on that earlier. We're gonna add a script to difficulty, and then we can just copy the move function that we created. Actually, I apologize, I probably should have increased the size of this. Let me bump this up a little bit so people can see. Hopefully that's a little bit better to see. I, I need to remember to do that earlier in the video. So we've got the difficulty script, we're just gonna copy move function with target and we're just going to plug it into the difficulty script. I hope that makes sense why we want the move function in each node because we're going to call move on them individually. I think there's probably a way that you could have a move function in kind of a global position and then instead of calling move on yourself you would call it on that node but for this example I just kind of want to keep it simple and keep it split up as much as possible. So under difficulty node that we just created let's add a tween just like we did I don't know why that's happening I thought that I'd right clicked on that maybe I have to select it beforehand but let's just move this up to the difficulty node rename that to move tween and then the difficulty should work as well since this move function is here whenever we hit start and we want this to move left we can just make that target call in the same place where we've hit the start button because it's the same signal so in addition to moving the start node or that group of buttons we're going to move difficulty we're going to move that to zero zero so that it essentially just replaces the menu that's there currently so let's just see how that works if we had to fix anything we will and apparently we do Let's see what I did wrong. So I've got move tween its position is zero zero. Oh, I see. Okay. So when I created this node, I, I just, I'm telling you, I keep making mistakes and making mistakes. So when I created this node, I forgot that I had already moved this V box to 576.0. So if I'm calling our move function on this difficulty node, it's already at zero, zero, because the difficulty menu is at 576 relative to this node. So let's move that to zero. So now it's kind of at its origin with its parent node, and then we'll move the parent difficulty node to 576. Now if we run it again, we're actually moving the parent node since it's at 576, and if we hit start, it should move and it should take the place of our beginning menu. In the next video, I won't do it right now, but we would essentially add a back button and it would move this difficulty to the right and the beginning start menu back to the right and we would be back kind of where we started. So that's just a little primer on the tween nodes. I think that looks good for the menu for now. At least the menu is actually moving. I'm going to do the last thing I mentioned, which is move this global node into an actual global position where it's available across the whole project. I think I'll actually rename this to global. I don't know why I named it globals to begin with. So it's global. We're gonna add a script, which is actually what we will be auto loading. This script is gonna be responsible for taking care of things like our high scores, our saving system, keeping up with what difficulty we're in at that time, and then anything else you wanna to add to the game. Also current color. I think current color will be stored here as well. So we've got the script. To auto load a script or a node, we just come up to project, project settings, auto load tab, and then we find that script. 
I think I've been saving things. Yeah, I'm going to have to work on my organization a little bit. Wherever you have that global.gd saved, just click on that and hit open. Don't exit this yet because you still need to hit this add button. But now it's auto loaded. So since it's available as a singleton, it's available across the entire project. I think ideally we probably would have just moved this outside of this root structure anyway. I may do that in the next video. I, we'll, we'll figure out if that's the best way to do it. Because it doesn't need to be in this tree anymore. It can be a separate scene, its own separate scene. But we'll, we'll see how that works for now. So now if we add things, just to give you an example of kind of that access, let's create a variable test var equals hello. So we've got this test variable, and now I'm going to call in the game. Well, I'm going to call in the start pressed. We're going to try to access that variable without getting the global node through the traditional tree structure because I would have to do, from this position, I would have to do like get parent to get the UI node and then get parent again to get the game and then get global to get its variables. But instead, since we've got it available as a singleton and it's auto loaded, we can just say global and you actually see it kind of pop up global and then when you put in the period you get access to the variable so test var so if we print that save it run the game if you watch this output down here when I hit start we'll see hello pop up so we're able to access that variable without doing anything crazy with the tree structure that's going to be extremely helpful with the stuff that we actually want to keep track of later on I think we've covered a good deal. We made a lot more progress in this video than I think we did in the last one, and the app is finally actually doing something, which is always exciting. As these tutorials go on, you'll start to see more and more how simple it is to get into app development with Godot, especially because the foundation can be used across projects. Once you kind of have these building blocks in place, it becomes really easy to add features to your games. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video or learned something new, remember to hit the subscribe button. Leave me a comment letting me know what you think about this series. I want it to remain as helpful as possible to beginners and intermediate and advanced users alike. I'm trying to make videos that I kind of wish were there when I first started. I want to make sure that people that are just starting are getting a lot of value out of it. So for now, that's all I got. Thanks for watching.